Hey friends, in this one, we're going to talk about something that is actually real here. $15,000 in uh, funding to folks who have been left out of uh, stimulus uh, funds, uh, unemployment benefits during the COVID pandemic. These individuals now, many of these individuals now have an opportunity to get something. Um, and we're talking about something very, very substantial, up to $15,600. For those of you who are new to me, welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining this live session. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey, an immigration lawyer in New York. And in this session, I'm going to talk about um, a major historical thing that happened just this week that would provide um, quite a bit of people up to $15,600 um, in funding uh, those who were left out of the COVID pandemic funding that, that many others benefited from. So if you're interested in learning more about this proposal, I'm going to go into great details about it. Not proposal. Um, this is real, guys. This is real. Um, and so it's going to benefit up to about 300,000 immigrants. Now, for those of you who are coming on board, just give me some hearts and likes. I'm going to go into my presentation and I'm going to go pretty fast because I have a lot of ground to cover about this exciting um, news. And I'm going to just go straight into it. Share this video with others in your feed. Um, and give it a thumbs up, give it a like, say hello, and tell me where you're watching from on this Saturday afternoon. By the way, I'm doing part, part I'm doing this video partly because I've been getting emails and um, requests from you guys about this issue. You wanted a breakdown of it. And so I did this presentation specifically for you. So I hope that you find value in this. Also, my law office, McBean Law, is not providing service around applying for this um, benefit that I'm going to discuss with you in this video. So don't call the law office asking when can you get your $15,000. Um, because we're not providing that service. I'm just sharing this information with you so that you know what's going on and that you could be well equipped to get what um, lawmakers have passed and will be distributing to people very soon. So if you, um, so go ahead and again, share this information and let's get right into it. Thank you guys for watching. I see people from all over uh, watching St. Lucia, New Jersey, Guyana, Jamaica. Um, I thought I saw to, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, California, Brooklyn. Thank you guys so much for being with me. California, excellent. Arizona. All right. Let's get into it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And again, share this video with your feed. I'm going to go right into it. So what am I speaking about here? This is the Excluded Workers Fund. Excluded Workers Fund. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you what is this new fund, who is eligible for it, how much you'll get, what documents do you need, and when can you actually apply for this fund. Now, what is this new fund? It's a $2.1 billion fund that was created um, to give up to 300,000 undocumented workers a one time payment of, uh, 15,600 or 3,200. Now it's if 15,000, the, there's going to be an automatic deduction, a tax that's going to come out of this, uh, of 780 for those who are eligible for the 15,000. And for those who are eligible for the 3,200, they're going to do an automatic deduction of $160 from it. Now who who does this fund target? It targets immigrants who lost income due to COVID-19. Also those who were ineligible for unemployment benefits as well as stimulus checks. So basically those who were left out, but to be eligible for this guys, you must be a current resident of New York because this is a New York law. Um, New York, um, uh, fund that was created just this week. So you must have lived in New York. You must be a current resident, number one, and you must have lived here in New York before March 27th, 2020. 
You must also have lost part or all of your income due to COVID and you must not have earned and you must have earned less than $26,208 in total over the past 12 months. So this is targeting individuals who have earned less money over the past 12 months who did not get any stimulus checks or uh, unemployment benefits during the COVID pandemic. Uh, the lost income includes those who have lost jobs. Uh, you may have lost just hours from your work. Uh, you may have gotten sick from COVID, from COVID and therefore you had to take time off. Um, or a breadwinner in your home um, died during the pandemic or you became disabled during um, due to COVID. Now, how much you will get is based on a two tier system. And I'm going to break it down for you here. But what you need to understand in essence is that the more documents that you actually have, the more to prove your eligibility, the more money you will get. Okay. So here's how it works. Who is eligible for up to 15,600 again, minus that automatic deduction of 780 that I mentioned earlier. Who is eligible for this? Well, firstly, you have to prove that you are a resident of New York and you must have filed taxes in 2018 or 2019 or 2020. Okay. Or, and if you have not filed taxes, if you did not file taxes during any one of those tax years, you must be able to prove that you did lose income during the COVID pandemic. Okay. And so if you had filed using an item number, file taxes using your item number, then, um, you're good to go with respect to this, but there's more that we're going to talk about. Uh, and this guys, you, you really want to watch this video more than one time to get this right, because this is a lot of money and, um, quite a bit of people are entitled to this at this point now that it's passed and they are working on the rules to get this out to you to distribute the money. So watch this video more than once. If you are a New York resident and you did not, and you were left out of the COVID relief, um, that many others got last year and recently. Okay. So who will get up to 3,200? Now, if you don't meet the requirements for the 15,000, how do you get the 3,200? Well, you get the 3,200. Um, it's for those who did not file taxes and they cannot prove that they lost income due to COVID. So, uh, so some people will get the 3,200, despite the fact that they do not meet some of the requirements that, um, I mentioned earlier. Now, what documents do you need, um, to do this? Well, this is a point system guys. This is a point system. So you have to prove your identity and your residency and points are attached to each document. If you're a New Yorker, you're familiar with the point system at DMV. Uh, you get five point three points for this one point for that document. And so they're applying a very similar system here for those who will be eligible for this, uh, one time, uh, payment. Okay. So how do you prove your identity? You will get four point four points is needed to prove identity. And so, um, these four documents, any one of these four documents automatically meets this requirements because it is four points that's attached to it. If you have an unexpired or non-expired New York state driver's license, which undocumented uh, individuals or in immigrants in New York are eligible for. Um, so if you have a state driver's license an unexpired, state ID card or the, uh, ID NYC card or a U.S. passport, you're automatically going to get four points. Then, um, uh, if you have any one of those documents, you're good. You don't need anything else to prove your residency. But if you don't have any one of those documents, you're going to have to do some math now to add up the points to get to the four. So, uh, if you have a foreign passport, that's three points. If you have a photo ID that was issued by the New York office of mental health, that's two points. If you have a, now here's one point. If 
you have a marriage certificate, a divorce decree, or a birth certificate from a foreign country, um, that's one point. One point for obviously each of those documents, but one point. Um, the NYC Parks and Recreation card, uh, I don't really know anyone who has that card, but if you do have that card, you get a point. Also, you get a point if you have um, the foreign issued ID, some sort of uh, consulate ID card or a diploma or transcript from a high school or college. Now, that's that's um, that's one thing. Now, you again, you must be you have to prove that you are a current resident of New York and you were a resident and you've been a resident. Um, you were a resident before March 27th, 2020. And whatever document that um, you submit for this process, for this benefit, uh, you must show your name as well as your address. The name and address must be on it. So this is residency that we're now going to talk about, whereas before we were talking about identity. Okay, so how do you prove residency? So you prove residency by submitting one of those state ID that I discussed earlier just um, uh, earlier, right? The driver's license or the state ID. Um, if you have one of those, you're really good. But if you you don't, everyone else has to submit two of the following documents, okay? Uh, a utility bill, a credit card, or a bank statement showing your name as well as the address, um, a lease or mortgage or property tax statement, or a letter from the New York City Housing Authority. Oops, hold on one second, guys. Uh, also, um, proven residency, you can use a letter from a homeless shelter, um, a letter from a nonprofit organization that provides homeless services, or any other document that the Department of Labor Commissioner will um, consider as acceptable. Now, this program is going to be administered by the New York Department of Labor. That is where you will be submitting this application to, okay? The Department of Labor. Now, um, proven residency, one of the above documents must be dated before March 27th, 2020. And then the other one um, must be dated no earlier than 30 days before this law goes into effect. And this law is going to be signed by the governor any second now. Um, okay. Now, how do you prove income or lost income or the wages that you were earning right under this, uh, benefit program? Well, again, it's, it goes back to whether or not you had filed taxes. If you did file taxes using an ITIN number, you've got to just submit the tax returns for 2018, 2019 and 20 or 2020. It's one. Okay, you don't have to do all three. If submit all three, just one. Um, if uh, if you're if you have one, you're good and you're eligible for the fifteen thousand six hundred one time. Uh, this is big. I, as I'm saying this, guys, I'm still think I'm processing this in my mind. Like, oh my god, this is this makes all of the other stimulus checks look look like uh, nothing, right? This is very big, but this is based on the idea that if individuals had been receiving $300 a week during the pandemic, this is really what it would uh, uh, amount to. So that's where they're getting this big number from. Okay. Now, what other documents do you need if, if you cannot, if you don't have your, you didn't file taxes, what else can you submit to meet this, um, loss income, uh, requirement. Well, firstly, you can submit a letter from your employer, which, uh, dates, uh, tells, you know, the dates that you were working for, uh, the employer and the reason why you're no longer employed by them. I have a little typo on my slide here, or you can submit, um, at least six weeks of pay stubs or wage statements from a six month period prior to the date you certify that you became eligible for these benefits. You could also submit W-2s or 1099s from 2019 or 2020. <clears throat> okay, time for a water break. Okay, and then um, another thing that you can submit is uh, what they're calling a wage theft prevention um, notice. 
that an employer would issue. I, you know, I'm not going to read everything on this screen here. You guys can watch this a second time and see for yourself. Now, what happens if you don't have enough proof? As I mentioned earlier, you're still eligible under the, uh, to get $3,200 if you can prove your identity and your residency. Okay. And then they're going to develop some additional documents that you'll need to submit to prove, uh, the work related eligibility. Okay. And so I don't see, okay, guys, where are you? Give me some hearts, likes. Are you there? Comment below. Let me know what you think about this so far. It's a lot of information that I'm sharing in this one. So give me some hearts, likes, and encourage me. <clears throat> okay. So the big question that I know some of you may have is, well, <clears throat> when can I apply for this? Right. When in the world can I actually apply for this? And so, uh, actually, hold on. Let me see something here. It looks like, uh, some of my slides. Okay. Nope. I'm good. Okay. So when can you apply for this? As I said, this, this, this has passed, it passed the New York state legislature, governor is going to sign it. And so the state is developing rules around this. And so it might be some months before you could actually, you know, submit the application and then the funds are distributed. Again, this is going to happen through the New York department of labor. So that's where you're going to have to pay attention to the announcement. That's where it's going to be coming from. Now, what if you're out there and you're thinking, well, uh, I'm concerned about ice. Okay. I'm concerned about putting an application into the state of New York with my name on it and some other information about me, um, so that I could get this benefit. What's going to happen if I do something like that. Right. And so according to the budget bill that passed, it says that the application that they create for you, that ap application cannot um, show certain things about you. Number one, it cannot show which document you use to prove your identity. Number two, it cannot show that you're ineligible for a social security number. And then number three, your citizenship or immigration status. That is not something that they will be asking you for during this application process. Now, if you're still very concerned about it, you also should know that the budget bill says that you don't have to prove that you're lawfully present in the United States. But, uh, you know, it's, it is, it is your, it is, it's your decision, right? It is ultimately going to be your decision with respect to whether you seek this benefit or not. Now, um, our state is not one New York, as you guys know, is very, um, progressive, so to speak and friendly towards immigrants. I know that under the Trump administration, there were some, um, a lot, a number of things that came up with respect to the data that, uh, New York maintains on immigrants. Okay. For the New Yorkers out there, you may remember this and, uh, lawsuits were filed to seek access to the data. So these are things that you still need to consider and think about obviously, but according to the budget bill, they're not going to look to see what, what your immigration status is or whether you were eligible for a social security number and whether you are lawfully present in the United States. So keep those things in mind. Okay. I think that's, uh, let's see, that's it. That is actually it. Um, yes. Okay. So I'm going to jump back on the screen here and again, reiterate or summarize that, um, funding is now available for workers who were left out of the relief that many others received over the past year, um, during the COVID pandemic. And you must be a resident of New York in order to benefit from this, share this with residents of New York, your friends, your family, um, because they may very well benefit from this. And again, it, they're projecting that up to 300,000 New Yorkers will be eligible for this, either the 15,000 or the 3,200 at a minimum. So, um, as more information 
comes out about this uh, funding opportunity for you, I will be sure to share it with you. Again, this is a Department of Labor, New York Department of Labor issue. It is not um, an issue necessarily that, it is not an issue that McBean Law is gonna work on for you. I'm just giving you the information, okay, for your own benefit. Okay, so where someone is asking, well, where can I get the form? Okay, so Samantha is asking, where can I get the form? And I don't know, I, I guess I didn't know that you were a New Yorker, Samantha. I see you pop up all the time in my forum, and I love having you here. Um, there is no form. There is no application that has been published yet. The Attorney General um, of New York needs to review rules. They, rules have to be created about how this is going to be distributed because they're concerned. They're, concerned about fraud, obviously. And so they have to write some rules around how they're going to distribute this. And she has to sign off on all of that. And once all of that is signed off, they will issue an application process for you guys to begin putting, um, uh, submitting your application. Okay. Uh, when will this go into effect? It's already joy. It's actually here. It's already, you know, I'm, I'm saying this and I'm still like, oh my goodness, they did this. But you can do something like this in the state of New York where you have the assembly that's democratically controlled as well as the Senate. And then obviously the governor is a Democrat. So this was um, a very big thing that happened here in New York um, this week. And so it does benefit quite a bit of people. And so someone is asking about the item. You've got to work with um, an accountant on that to look into how you, you uh, whether you're eligible and such to do that. But um, yeah, this is great. And this is not limited to essential workers, by the way. You, I don't think I even said essential workers at all during this presentation. This is basically for anyone who meet the eligibility requirements that I went through during this presentation. Um, and so, and then uh, someone is asking, well, what if you don't get paid on the books? What I would say about that is listen again to the presentation to see what the document rec requirements are, because if you're able to prove your identity and residency, there is an opportunity for you to still benefit um, by with the 3200 uh, so long as you're able to prove um, there is a document checklist there there's there are examples of the documents that the commissioner is going to develop for those who will get the 3200 um, it includes like uh, let me go back to that in the presentation let me scroll through because I think I had a little footnote in here about that I want to say hold on a second guys let me scroll through I may have passed it. Part of the, um, some aspects of this, here it is, some aspects of this are still under development, and this is one of this, one of them, the work-related eligibility. So it includes, they're going to add, uh, like, the pay stub, bank records showing deposits into your bank account. It has to correlate with the time period that you were working, um, receipts, wage no notices, and some other documents they will require Veronica um, to prove that you have a work-related, that you meet the work-related eligibility. This isn't open to people who do not meet work-related eligibility. Again, this is all about those who were left out, those who worked, and uh, uh, yet they were left out of the relief that others benefited from. So that's the whole idea here. Um, but that's, that's a great question. Thank you so much for asking that. Um, I'm not sure what, uh, well, I'm not sure I understand that question. Will that affect your immigration? But, ah, this should not, this should not, uh, Shana K is asking whether this will affect, if you have an immigration benefit application and process, this should not affect it at all because this is completely different and unrelated to the federal immigration process that you may be going through or your family may be going through. That's a very different process from this right here. So, and then also, as you guys know, public charge is no longer in effect and this wouldn't even have really been, this wouldn't even have been a public charge issue anyway. So you should be fine with your immigration benefit. Okay. 
Okay. So someone um, has says, Marcia said that she got 1400 but not the 600 uh, and then 1200 So Marcia, you had received, you received stimulus uh, check, right? You received your stimulus check. You got 1400 So you're not eligible for this. This is for people who were not eligible at all for stimulus, for the stimulus check, and they were also not eligible for unemployment benefits. So this this one isn't for you, Marcia. It, I you know you think about fifteen thousand six hundred versus fourteen hundred, you know. But in any event, um, this this is big. This is very big. So in any, I'm going to end the presentation now. I don't want this to be too long. I just wanted to come on um, briefly today and talk with you about this big news and watch this again. Subscribe to my channel, McBean Immigration TV, and hit the notification bell so that you'll get my videos each week. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Call the law office if you need an immigration, uh, if you need help with your immigration case. Check out our website first to see what areas of immigration law we work on and how we help people each week in my law office. Um, go to mcbeanlaw.com to see that information. And uh, you may reach the office at 718-301-9732 during business hours, Monday through Friday. Okay, guys, thanks so much for being uh, with me in this one and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And again, share this video with many others so that they can see whether this is something for them. I mean, I'd like to know if I was eligible for $15,000. That's This is good news for a lot of people who really needed the relief. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.